Today I want to talk about this uh, really amazing technology for regenerative carbon sequestration. And I have a couple samples here I want to hand out. People, you can pass these around here. It's always good to have props, right? And it's made from sunlight and simple sugars. And you can use it to build buildings, houses, cabinets, furniture, all these kind of amazing things. Now, the raw material is called tree. And the finished product is called wood. So that's a little attempt at humor here. Well, it worked. Okay, good. You're laughing. I like that. But what am I really trying to say? I'm making an important point here. What I'm saying is biological solutions over technological solutions. Because a lot of times when we create these modern human fiascos, we try to invent something new to fix that problem. And in fact, a lot of times we don't need to. And this is great news because trees and lumber and wood exist, and we don't need to create it. So let's talk a little bit more about what that means. So this is a second growth stand of Doug fir. It's going to get clear cut. They're going to spray chemicals all over the ground. They're going to make sure nothing else grows back except for the first seedlings that they plant. And those logs are going to go to an industrial sawmill in the middle of nowhere. And now begins the sad life of a Home Depot 2x4. <laughs> so here's a different kind of tree. This is a cherry tree at the local college across the street from my house. And how do we feel about trees in our neighborhood? They're like members of the community, kind of like our pets. Yes, it is a picture of a dog in a tutu. It's amazing how many pictures of dogs in tutus there are on the internet, but that's another TED talk. <laughs> and how do we feel about our pet trees? Ah, it feels nice, good. So. Let's back up for a second, and let's talk about this tree that has a shelf life, just like us. When this tree comes down, what's going to happen to it? Is it going to be repurposed into something? And the answer is it's probably not. In fact, every year in North America, over 4 billion board feet of lumber is cut up for firewood, mulch, or a lot of times it's just taken to the dump. And so in the end, the city trees, these pet trees that we care so much about, end up having less of a higher purpose than the trees that come out of the forest. So let's back up again a little bit and say this tree falls down in a windstorm, whatever happens. And uh, we look on Craigslist. We find a guy with a portable sawmill. He pulls up with an old beat up truck and the sawmill. We roll the log up onto there. He buzzes out a bunch of boards. And we turn it into a flipping amazing cherry bench. Now, this bench came from a cherry tree that was cut down at a job site of mine a couple years ago, and I milled it up and made beautiful furniture out of it. And I'm pretty sure most people don't think I should cut that up for firewood. I don't think my wife would be too happy about it. So right now, there are individuals and small companies that are starting to mill urban lumber, but it's inconsistent and inefficient. And so what I'm saying is not only should we harvest existing trees as they come down, but that we need to plan for the future with urban lumber in mind. So let me give you a couple examples of what I'm talking about. So this is uh, some Intel property. It's in Hillsborough, Oregon, a suburb outside Portland. This is around their parking lot. And it's a pretty typical corporate landscape. You have some trees in a line, doink, 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 some ubiquitous landscaping plants, and a whole lot of lawn. Now, this landscape not only costs money to install, but it costs a lot of money to maintain. And businesses are in business to make money. So why would you want to do something that costs you money? Why would you want to have a lazy landscape? So here's uh, a little bit of an improvement. I laid out 70 trees in the grass, so you can see how many trees you could fit into this kind of a space to grow urban lumber. Now, if you're not familiar with what a forest looks like, I'd encourage you to go check one out sometime. <laughs> so let's do some numbers here. What is the value of a smart landscape? So the area in red, is uh, the area around this massive parking lot. It's around 15 acres. And that's if you planted 200 trees per acre, 1,000 board feet per tree, that's about 50, 70 years from now, that's 3 million board feet of lumber. At $10 a board foot, which is on the lower end of things for different hardwood trees, that's $30 million. Now, it's US dollars, Canadians. It's a lot of loonies and toonies, right? <laughs> I don't, right? Good. Okay. And if nothing else, I think that 
The trees will make their signs a little more friendly. So here's another example. This is a living building project that I worked on in Portland over the last couple of years. So the Living Building Challenge is the most stringent living building certification program in the entire world. And I was lucky enough to work on one of the first projects. And this is a diagram of the water cycle of the site. As you can see, it rains, falls down on the roof. It goes into a 12,000-gallon cistern. That water is used inside the house. It all drains out into the garden in a gray water system, which waters uh, vegetables and fruit trees and blueberry bushes. I also did a lot of earthworks with heavy equipment to harvest all the overland flow of water. But you know, as green as this building is and this project was, I thought, what's the most regenerative thing I could do here? Because it took a lot of resources to build that. And I said, let's plant lumber here. So in fact, that's what I did. I planted over 40 lumber producing trees on the site. We've got alders and we've got oak trees and large trees. And um, it was really simple. I planted the trees 10 or 15 feet apart. I cut off the lower branches. And in 50 years, 1,000 board feet per tree, that's 40 trees. That's uh, $400,000 worth of lumber. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the future. So obviously, these are some kind of examples. But this is a nice park uh, in southeast Portland. As you can see, there's a lot of mature trees that are all really usable uh, for lumber at some point. And um, there are some nuts and bolts things to go over. So how do we move forward? We need to encourage designers, contractors, and customers to use urban lumber in their projects when possible. We need to make growing trees for lumber in urban and semi-rural areas a cornerstone of land management. And we need to change policy. And here's how we're going to do that. Urban lumber certification, we need to create urban lumber certification programs for suppliers to successfully harvest mill and dry lumber. We need education programs to help homeowners and landowners effectively grow lumber. We need economic development and supply chain management strategies. And we need long-term forestry management plans with a strong focus on sustainable urban lumber production. So this is a picture of me in front of my house holding a flowering cherry slab I got from a, actually a different job site. And behind me is my front porch, which I built out of black locust lumber. So black locust lumber. Black locust is the most rot resistant, is more rot resistant than a pressure tree, and it's harder than oak. And uh, oddly enough, in the city of Portland, it's considered an invasive tree. It's on the do not plant list. So I guess you could say I built my front porch out of weeds. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a really amazing process to go through to see a tree turn into lumber, to turn into a finished product. But it was really wacky, and it took a lot of time. So my friend, who has a portable sawmill, milled up all the wood for me, and I said, this is awesome. I brought it home. I put it in my garage. My wife's like, great, you're going to build this really cool thing. And I said, well, it's going to be two years because I had to dry the lumber for two years before it was ready to go. And then when I was in the process of building it, I was terrified that if I made a wrong cut, I couldn't go get more lumber from the store because these trees were this random weed tree from across the street from my house. And so I don't think it needs to be that way. So what am I really getting at today? I'm saying that it shouldn't be something where there's these weird random hobby projects, but this should be accessible to everybody. And I'm not just saying that I think we should cut down trees and turn them into lumber, but I, I guess I kind of am saying that. Um, what I'm really talking about is reforesting the entire planet. And over the last 100 to 150 years, half of the world's trees have been cut down, and we need to put them back. And we need to start right now. And I think that urban lumber is a great incentive to do that because liberals and lefties like me like to plant trees, and conservatives like to cut them down and create jobs. So imagine if we could actually get David Suzuki and Stephen Harper to work together on the same thing. <laughs> I don't know. I, we'll, we'll try. So when I was asked to come give this presentation, you know, the theme is an unconventional solution. And yes, what I'm doing is somewhat unconventional, but it's not that unconventional. So I thought, I bet there's people in Kelowna that are doing the same kinds of stuff that I've been doing in Portland, Oregon. And in fact, I've met some amazing visionary people right here in the Okanagan Valley, and I'd like to introduce a few people. So I've got uh, somebody hiding behind the stage here. I'm going to bring him on up. And we've got a little piece of uh, lumber here. Stand by. And this is Derek. Derek's a local woodworker in town. 
This is an oak slab, and he harvested this tree from Bernard Avenue downtown. This tree was removed to be part of the redevelopment plan. Yeah, I think I got a hold of it. It's a little heavy. Watch out the front there. <laughs> and he also has these really amazing uh, walnut trays that he made out of reclaimed lumber. All these trees came from the city. He's selling these things to high-end wineries and people all around the Okanagan Valley. And I think it's really important to show these amazing, beautiful things. I'm going to go ahead and set this down here. In fact, it's been so exciting to meet Derek. I'm going to give this guy a hug. Like, yeah. <laughs> but not, not for too long, because that would get a little weird. <laughs> and also, um, not only that, so I met Derek through the city of Kelowna, and I talked to Blair Stewart, who is with the Urban Forestry Division, and he totally got urban lumber. And in fact, he gave me 25 trees, little seedlings. This is a western red cedar. This is a larch. And uh, he said that I could plant them while I'm up here. I didn't want to come up here and just talk and do nothing. And uh, so I talked to Dustin, the owner of this amazing property, who also totally gets urban lumber. And so tomorrow, we're going to plant these trees right here on site. And we're going to start growing urban lumber. And we're going to start reforesting the planet right in the Okanagan Valley. So thank you so much.